I'm Diana Chan, a chef and TV presenter. I have been in the industry for about six years now. Basically how I started in the industry was from MasterChef. So I was on MasterChef season nine. Prior to that, I was working in the corporate industry and I just decided to have a complete change, go into food. I've always loved food since I was young. I grew up in a you know, very ethnic foodie kind of family. So I guess that's kind of what's brought me here today. Ever since I finished MasterChef, it's been a crazy ride in the food industry. Quite broad, I've done hospitality. I had a restaurant to start with, like a pop-up restaurant for eight months. Realized how much work that was and realized I also wanted to step out of the kitchen a little bit more. So um, I did that. I'm glad I did that, take that box. Um, I've gone to cool places like Yangon. Um, I've gone to they've sent me to Dubai for work. And I do have long-term partnerships with obviously um, the dumplings that I stock at Coles and Woolies. So that's been ongoing for five years and that's something I'm really proud of. You know, I have long-term partnerships and brands. I support the, the Australian Open and the, um, the Grand Prix, which is coming up. So I'm working with Alpha this year. And I also work with the Victorian Racing Club for Flemington. And I have been for the last five years, I've done guest chef events and I've worked as a, as a food ambassador for them. The toughest challenge for me so far since sort of changing from a corporate career and into food is I think just the transition itself, the uncertainty. I, I guess going into a new field is always a bit daunting but you know what I love the challenge. I love what every day brings. It's always a different day when I wake up I've got a you know a different diary that I look at and it's just really scary but at the same time really exciting. I think my biggest advice for women wanting to make a change I think is mainly having the right confidence, right attitude, right work ethic and understanding like doing research it's you know it's not gonna just happen overnight you got to be patient you got to work through it you got to speak to people like never be afraid to ask and there's never a stupid question be able to you know say hey I'm gonna pick up the phone and call someone because they know more than I do and I think that's one of the biggest things you can do for yourself what I'd like to see more of in my industry is um, you know, cutting away the stigma that, you know, men do it better in the kitchen and women are equally as strong, as confident and equally as qualified. My greatest source of inspiration would be two things. So my, my mum, so I am constantly, when I'm trying to create a dish uh, that I've never done before, I'm always, she lives in Malaysia, so I'm always on the phone to her, giving her a call. Hey mum, how do you do this? Although her recipes are so like vague, like, She's like, I'll just put a bit of this. I'm like, how much? <laughs> like, you know? Um, and two, I get my inspiration through travel. So everywhere I go, I always try and eat where the locals eat, shop where the locals shop. And I draw a lot of inspiration from that. I think that's one of my um, biggest, that's how I learn, watch and learn and taste. I think one of the biggest advice my mother would have said to me is <laughs> never to rely on a guy. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, she's 73 now and she still works and she doesn't, you know, she, she doesn't work that much, but she always turns around and says to me, you know, if I didn't work, I could never buy this, this and that. So I guess that's kind of stuff. All, all the women in my life have been very strong. Like my grandmother raised five kids on her own. Like my mom was a working mom, raised three kids. So I think naturally, I think that's ingrained in me. Um, and it's not to say that I would never rely on my partner, but <laughs> I, I think, you know, I would, I would like to be independent and self-sufficient. Yeah, so I continue to challenge myself every day by doing something new, exciting and different. How can I better myself? How can I be um, on top of my game? How can I be relevant? Um, it's always doing something, yeah, sort of slightly out the box. Um, something like this, you know? Um, I get to dress up, I'm not in the kitchen, but you know, it's something that I love. Like I love watches and you know, I love to talk about, you know, celebrating women and women in the culinary world, women in any industry. So why not? Doing something different is always good. What item from my kitchen I can't live without? My knife. I, I use it for everything. Um, <laughs> cutting hair, joking. Um, no, <laughs> it's, it's the tool that I use most. Chopping, cutting, whatever. Um, yeah, it's, I could not live without my knife. <laughs> 
Timekeeping plays an important role in the kitchen. I always say the three things that you need. Is it three? Wait, hang on. Yes, I think it's three. So time and the produce and what basically what, what you put in when and application of heat. So time is very important. What you put in when will make sure that the dish comes out a certain way or how you want it to be. This Rolex here is my latest the Green Face OP. I'm very proud of it. I love it. Uh, it's a 36mm and the green was what caught my eye. When I walked into the Watches of Switzerland store on Collins Street, I'm drawn to green, clearly. Like, <laughs> I think it's the colour of, you know, it's a natural colour. It's a, it's a colour of food. I was instantly connected to the watch and I love it. It's even with the OP strap, I think it's it's got a different look. It's a bit more sportier. Um, I do have a date just with the Jubilee bracelet and that's you know, a little bit more feminine, whereas this one I think is a great day-to-day -day watch, which, yeah, I love it. It goes with everything. So this one here is my date dress, the two-tone date dress with the Jubilee bracelet. I, it's a 31mm. I bought this piece when I turned 30 and when I just finished MasterChef. It was a milestone for me and I, you know, at that moment in time, I was you know, I obviously felt like I had achieved something in a big, in a big way. And I just went out and I just had to buy it for myself. I, you know, I couldn't resist. And it was, it's been like nine years since I bought something um, prior to that. And you know what? They say once you turn the tap on, you can't turn it off because I can't stop buying watches now. You know, I love this piece. It's a good one that you can interchange from day to night. I always feel very welcomed. I feel that I can't decide <laughs> on what I want. Um, usually I go in there and you know already have in mind what I want, but then it's very dangerous because you just end up seeing something else that you like. But you know, hey, that's it's all fun and it's a it's a really um, really welcoming environment. And yeah, I I guess I feel at home there. <laughs>